Hello and welcome. My name is Tom Samarero and I am the director for the Office of Youth Ministry. I want to take a little bit of time to share with you uh, Pope Francis' second encyclical, Laudato Si, and how we as family can live it out in our daily lives. You know, living out Laudato Si as a family sounds complicated, but it's really not. It's just a matter of incorporating some new habits into your lifestyle and your daily routine. I hope to share with you 10 ways you can do that in this series. So come on, let's go. Okay, welcome back. I'm sure the things you saw in the video uh, is nothing really new. It's The news is full of information about the changes in our climate and what's happening to our brothers and sisters around the world because of this climate change. But I wanted to start out this way, so just give some perspective on what we're up against. Uh, sometimes in our daily lives, 
we don't really see the effects of, of our actions on the environment. What can we do as a family to have an impact, to have a positive impact on our earth, you know, God's gift to us, and also on, on our own lives, in our own lives? Well, with all good things, it's great to start out with just prayer. So we pray with and for creation. Taken from Laudato Si, our relationship with the environment can never be isolated from our relationship with others and with God. See, it's very circular. Everything here on this earth has a cycle. You know, if you all know that great movie from Disney, The Lion King, it's a circle of life. It's just so very true. It just takes a moment to observe that in the world around us. Um, it's very apparent when many of you who have been to Camp Guggenheim or have a few minutes to just look around and see this unique circle of life that occurs there. Um, so some of the ways we can uh, work together here as a family is include a prayer of thankfulness for creation and that we will protect our common home in your family's prayers. Also, pray with the news or incorporate people impacted by climate or ecological issues into your daily prayer. You can also just pray outside together so these are three great ways to pray. Um, any ways you may come up with on your own work just as well. The Lord will speak to your hearts on how you can pray as a family. Um, something neat that I found, um, many, many of you may be familiar with uh, an examine. So I found this one uh, that is a Laudato Si examine. And it's just an examination of our actions. Uh, so for example, when you get in here, you know, I give thanks to God for creation and for being wonderfully made. And you ask yourself, where did I feel God's presence in creation? So um, it might be really neat to uh, kind of take an exam and from time to time and do it as a family and actually have a discussion about it. I'll uh, have links uh, to, to this exam and also I'll have um, this slideshow saved for you as well. Another way we can incorporate Laudato Si in our family is, you know, just to live simply. From Laudato Si we read, there is a nobility in the duty to care for creation through little daily actions. You know, it means you don't have to do these big movements or, you know, try to make big changes. It's all done with little, little steps and little, little ways. For example, um, real simple, think about decluttering your home. Um, Clean up, get some of that stuff recycled, uh, sold on, uh, you know, maybe eBay or Facebook. There's always someone else that can use your stuff. I find that so true. Uh, another great way is go, go on camping and have staycations as opposed to large expensive trips. I mean, big trips are great. And if you can do those every so often, bonus. But, you know, maybe focus on the little ways. Uh, another way is to find joy in the world God has created for us. Look for the little little signs and little ways that God brings a smile to our face. Uh, think of a of a blue jay sitting in a branch and just look at the beautiful blue colors and it just can warm you up and bring you back to center. Don't give in to buying the next big thing or fad item. You know, hold off a little bit. Kind of think about it. Make sure it's something, you know, you need. Or if it's something you want, we're going to talk about needs and wants in a little bit, but a little bit of want in your life is okay, but not too much. Another great way to live simply is minimize social media. You know, social media is a powerful tool, um, but you have to regulate them because they waste time. And as any of you may know, time is the most valued resource in the world. I'll tell you, once it's gone, you can never get it back. Another great way is to focus on the here and now. This is very hard for a lot of us because we have so many pressures of the world coming in on us. You know, we've got to work. We've got to get here. We've got to get there. It's real hard to just sit down and say, okay, I'm going to just not worry about anything while I have a nice dinner with my family. If you try to embrace that a bit more, it really does bring uh, peace in your life. And it also opens up opportunities for the Lord to speak to you. I mentioned earlier that we're going to talk about wants and needs. So uh, before anyone in the family purchases something, you've got to ask yourselves, do I need or do I want this? You know, for children, if you want something new, you've got to discuss if it's important or not. So this is a good one to have 
a good conversation to have as a family, right? You know, talk about what does it mean to want something and what does it mean to need something? Uh, you can have that conversation and, you know, make it age appropriate. Um, and like I said, you never, you really got to try to find balance, you know? This earth continually does that. It tries to strike a balance. And uh, that's God's hand at work saying, look, I want you to have joy in your life. Um, but you also need to, you know, practice a bit of prudence as well. And somewhere in the middle, you're going to find peace. Uh, another great uh, way to work as a family together is by uh, reducing what's called a carbon footprint. Okay, so many of you have probably heard this term, but I'll take a moment to kind of just define it. It's the amount of carbon dioxide and other carbon compounds emitted due to the consumption of fossil fuels by a particular person, group, etc. So that's carbon, you know, all the uh, exhaust and everything, it's just eating up our ozone, it's creating acid rain, and it's really throwing our planet off balance. And, um, you know, the universe is going to go on, the, the, our planet's going to move on, but we're going to push it so far by, you know, not paying attention to it that it will be an inhabitable, inhabitable for humans, you know, and animals too. So it will be a big rock. It will do its thing. But we may be gone if we don't practice some of these things. So we'll be gone, actually. <laughs> so you can try things like, um, you know, good old reduce, reuse, and recycle. We've been hearing that for many years. You know, reduce consumption, reuse things when you can, recycle as much as possible, you know. Uh, a little tip, big, big juicy burger up here. I love hamburgers. Uh, so, but you go without meat one day a week is just a little sacrifice um, that helps re reduce the carbon footprint. Hey, you know, it lines right up with our Catholic faith. Maybe uh, on Fridays, you know, just kind of hold back a little bit and, and be grateful that we have food at all and pray on that and just kind of make it a family thing, you know. Try to eat seasonally. That means eat foods that grow in your region seasonally. Eat locally. Eat more plants more veg vegetables and um, greens. They're good for you, you know? <laughs> uh, great. Another great uh, way to uh, reduce that carbon footprint is to conserve water and protect our waterways. Uh, they're vital. Uh, what's beautiful about living in this diocese of Ogdensburg is we are surrounded by waterways and rivers and lakes, and they're beautiful. They're gorgeous. But I'm sure you've been hearing that, you know, they're suffering a bit. I personally live near Lake Champlain, and all summer long, they're closing beaches because of these blue al these algae blooms, and we can't swim, and that's because we have too much, too much runoff and phosphorus and all that stuff running into the lake, causing it to be out of balance. You know, it's not easy to adopt these added measures into our ways of living. I'll tell you, with a little practice, it really becomes second nature. It really, really does. Um, this, I'll tell you, is one of my favorite ways of living Laudato Si is just to be with my family as much as possible and doing things together that have a minimal impact on our, a minimal negative impact on our earth. Uh, I say, agree on family time you'll spend together in a way that doesn't use electronics. Uh, so spend some time in the park. You know, let's hike on some trails. Go swimming. Go to the beach. There's no algae blooms. <laughs> when you're there, you can pick up some some garbage if you see it and put it in the bin. You know, even on the trails too and in the park. Um, I usually I carry like throwaway gloves or disposable gloves with me because whenever I see garbage and if it's not too nasty, I'll grab it and throw it in the bin and um, do my little part. You know, little part. Do each do a little bit. Um, I would recommend that we advocate to protect our common home. Taken from Ladado C once again, there is an urgent need to develop policies so that in the next few years, the emission of carbon dioxide and other highly polluting gases can be drastically reduced. You know, we have to uh, join in the conversation, this universal conversation of, of taking care of our earth. And it, it's, it's a Catholic conversation. It is a non-Catholic conversation. It is a world conversation. And this is one of those things where we have to come together as human beings um, under God and take care of this place. And we have to talk about it with each other and just make a plan. It's absolutely doable. It's so doable, it's, it just boggles my mind that we just can't give in to some of our, our human 
our weaknesses and just say, let's work together as a team and make this place as blue and beautiful as that picture on there. Let's keep it that way. Another way is, you know, find a way as a family to contribute to care for creation, such as taking children to a park to clean up or joining a climate rally. Um, again, it's just like when you see a little bit of a mess somewhere, you know, just pick it up, throw it away. You know, I know how many times I can't tell you how many times I'm driving down the road and I'll see that good old McDonald's bag just, you know, in, in cups and fry containers are empty and are just fl- floating down the road, and I'm like. Somebody just threw that out their window. But you never know how that got there, and it really doesn't matter because all we need to do is clean up. In the end, we all take care of each other. Um, Something neat that I like, because I I love art, uh, and I love drawing and and painting and anything that's art, uh, is to hold a postcard or petition drive at your parish to support environmental policies with everyone in the family writing postcards. And and these don't have to be... um, you know, uh, super works of art, just make them fun and just put your feelings right into it. And you can take those postcards and you can mail them to your officials or send them, you know, share them with each other in the parish. This is a great uh, idea that we just got to lobby. We have to tell our officials about, about what we feel about the earth in our home. That's what they're there for. They represent the people, us. So ask each person in the family, including children, what your community could do to be kinder to creation and write to your local council, mayor, or other community official asking them to consider the change. You know, you can even write to um, the Parks and Recreation Department, you know, the director of that, and let them know, hey, look, we want to, like, find ways to keep our home clean, our little town or city or neighborhood, Okay. So these are a bunch of great ways. So that's that's about our earth, you know, taking care of the creatures, uh, our food supply, our air, and everything everything around us. Uh, another component of Ladado Sea is is uh, taking care of each other. And a lot of people miss this because sometimes they just feel Ladado Sea is all about um, taking care of the earth. But the earth isn't just rock, sea, and animals and vegetables. It's people too. It's us. Okay. So we're called to protect the human dignity. Uh, you know, all human life is sacred. All life is, is really sacred under God. We, we are made in the likeness of God. And actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a little video for you. And it will tell you a little bit about human dignity in Laudato Si. A key principle of Catholic social teaching is human dignity. The dictionary says dignity is the state of being worthy of honour or respect. Human dignity is sometimes described as the cornerstone or the foundation of Catholic social teaching. The source of church teaching on dignity is the book of Genesis. From Genesis 1, 26 to 27, the church teaches that human beings are made in the image and likeness of God. The Catechism of the Catholic Church says, every human person created in the image of God, has the natural right to be recognised as a free and responsible being. What does this mean? If you are described as being the image of someone, it usually means you look like them. So do we all look like God? Of course not, but we do reflect God. The theological term imago dei means that human beings reflect God. For example, in our ability to be creative, to make free, rational decisions, and to love. Catholic social teaching says that, since God is reflected in every person, the dignity of every person must be respected. The Vatican II document, Gaudium et Spes, says about human dignity, that there is a growing awareness of every person's exalted dignity. Everyone must consider their every neighbor as another self, taking into account the means necessary to live with dignity. Catholics believe that human life is something sacred, a gift from God, and that we are all God's children. Pope John XXIII wrote, there will be no peace or justice in the world until we return to a sense of our dignity as creatures and children of God. So, how can we respect human dignity? We can 
consider other people's needs, pray for them, uphold their rights, act in solidarity, care for the earth because it was given for everyone. Catholic social teaching asks everyone to treat other people with dignity. For example, to respect their human dignity, how would a Catholic aid agency depict the people it supports? Where else might human dignity present a challenge? So I hope you got a little information from that video, um, give you just, just a touch of the concept of human dignity. Really, if you're interested in learning more about human dignity and what are what's actually called our Catholic social justice, teachings on social justice, uh, which is quite prevalent in our, in our world right now as we're uh, dealing with all the different racial tension that's going on, um, I encourage you to... Uh, look up some social justice teaching, Catholic social justice. You know, we have people in our community right now that are, are doing wonderful things. And I wanted to highlight just a few, a few of them. Um, in this next video that's coming up, we're going to just quickly hear about Anna Dalton and her efforts in Shattagay. Green Apple Award for a project that I did to get all of this plastic straws out of our cafeteria. I just woke up one morning like I want to do, I want to try to save the environment. We saw a bunch of pictures of animals dying from that and we got concerned and we tried to stop it in our area. The idea I came up with is we get rid of the plastic straws and try to replace them with bamboo, paper, or metal. At the end of last year we were thinking of doing a compost. And my friends seem to be all on board with it, so I'm pretty excited. Isn't that great? And Anna's uh, got a whole troop going on over there, and they're doing wonderful things. And it, it all started with just an idea. And she was moving forward on it, and it picked up momentum because her friends wanted to be part of it. So it doesn't take much. Just need a little spark to get the fire going. Uh, we have another great example uh, from Lydia Nebesnik, and she is a student over at Seton Catholic, and she did a project on uh, her family's pollution reduction during the COVID quarantine. So here's a few quick slides of, of what they did. They did, they worked they, on gasoline before shutdown between round trips to school and errands in town. My, my family drove at least 450 miles per week that we don't drive now. This is equivalent to 18 gallons of gasoline that we did not burn in one week. This is a lot of pollution and money that just our family saved. I'm sure many of you have experienced that as well, too, during the quarantine. Plastic. Ever since the quarantine, our family has been making our own yogurt and baking our own bread. Every time we make yogurt, we use a cardboard half gallon of milk. This is saving two plastic yogurt containers. When we bake bread, we save two plastic bags per loaf. We bake about four loaves a week. But you, they're gonna, I bet you that house smells good when they're baking all that wonderful bread. But you can see these are just small changes in gardens. Now that we have more time at home, our family has had time to start our garden. We also set up a table with a light to start seedlings that we will plant when it gets warmer. Gardens not only save money and give us food, but they help save plastic bags and they are good for the environment. And finally, on water and energy... Lydia says, now that our family is going less places, we are dirtying less clothes. Therefore, we are doing less wash. This is saving water and energy. All these ways are helping the environment. If we remember these ways of conserving in the future, we will be able to conserve more. Great job, Lydia, and great job, Anna. And any of you out there that are having ideas, just go for it. Ask your parents, work together, and start something small. And if it grows big, Awesome. That's how the Lord wanted it to be for you. If not, just keep doing the good works. I encourage you to spread the word. Taken from Laudato Si again. Truly much can be done. If we spread the word, get together, 
Let other family members and friends know what you've done and invite them to take the pledge. In answering Pope Francis's urgent call in Laudato Si, we should all pledge to pray for and with creation, live more simply, and advocate to protect our common home. Well, I hope you found that informative and enjoyable. So take what you learned today, get out there, live life, Laudato Si, and share it with everyone you meet. God bless you. i